Hi and welcome to this Leaving Cert Higher Level Maths Calculus video. In this video we're going to look at graphical representations of functions and also their derivatives. We're going to include some exam style questions here. So example one, here's a linear function. It's given to us in red and its equation is y equals 3x plus 2. So it's written in the form y equals mx plus c. You should be familiar with this from the coordinate geometry section of your course. m stands for slope and the c is the y-intercept. So what we can see from this graph is that it cuts the y-axis at 2 and we'll know from this equation that it has a slope of 3. Now, if we were to differentiate this, which we've done here on the right, dy dx is 3. Now, remember, dy dx is just another way to find slope. When we talk about slope of a line, the answer will be a constant. Now, a constant is a special line, horizontal or vertical, that is technically a straight line, but because one value does not depend on the other, it is simply written as y equals or x equals. In this case, it's y equals 3. And the reason it's y equals 3 is because it crosses the y-axis here at 3. And if you pick any point on that line, the y value will be 3. So it doesn't matter what the x value is, the y value will be 3. So when we talk about a linear function, we, when we differentiate it, we will get what's known as a constant. A constant looks like just a number without any letter, without a variable. Example two, a quadratic function. So here we have a curve and um, it's a parabola. It is a positive quadratic. We can see from the graph that it will have two roots, one at minus one and one at three. So there's the root of minus one, there's the root of three. We are given this dotted line here at one, and that is actually its axis of symmetry. And that line, it's a vertical line, it is also a constant, it is x equals one. So it doesn't matter what y value you take, if you pick any point on that line, the x value will be one. So the question is, which one of the lines below represents the slope of the function of a given curve? Now, quadratics are a little bit more challenging because if we think about the slope of the quadratic, and I said to you, what is the slope of this quadratic? The answer would be, well, it depends. It depends on what x value you choose. So it depends where you look. In some places, there is no slope. In some places, there's a positive slope. And in some places, there's a negative slope. So really, what we want to do is we get a formula for the slope. So when we differentiate a quadratic, we still get an x in our answer for slope because it will then depend on what value we sub in for x. So we have three versions here. We have a, notice that a is a negative quadratic, b, which is a positive quadratic, and c, which is a positive quadratic. And we need to figure out which one is which. Well, in the first instance, we have a positive quadratic. So my answer will then also have to be positive. So I will have a positive linear derivative. So a is off the table. So is it b or is it c? A really important point that we need to note on our original quadratic is its turning point. Now they've told us that the turning point has an x value of 1. We don't know its y value but that's not important. What we do need to note is when we differentiate a curve like this or of a higher degree, the turning points will become the roots of the derivative. So the turning point here is x equals 1. So the derivative will have a root of x equals 1. Now, we have linear and we don't usually use the term root when we're talking about a linear. Really, what we're talking about is the x-intercept, where it crosses the x-axis. So we can see here that on graph B, it crosses the axis at 1, which matches the turning point of our original function. So B is correct. C crosses it at minus 1, which is not 
correct. So the final answer is B. Example three, now we have a cubic. So we need to figure out which of our three quadratics below match this cubic. So we have a graph A, which is negative, graph B, which is positive, and graph C, which is positive. And the cubic itself, remember, right arm up means it's positive or cover it. And the right hand side looks like a positive quadratic. So this is positive. A positive cubic will turn into a positive quadratic. So A is gone. So we're trying to figure out which one is correct. Is it going to be B or is it going to be C? Just like in our previous example, we need to focus on the turning points. So we have a turning point here. It's a minimum turning point and we have a maximum turning point about there. It's not hugely accurate and um, they haven't given us any indication, but roughly it looks about zero and four. That means that the roots of our derivative, the roots of the quadratic, will have to be 0 and 4. So that looks like C is the correct answer. I'm going to take a quick look at B and see there is a positive root and a negative root, which definitely doesn't make sense. So even though we can't be hugely accurate about um, the cubics points, roughly it looks like 0 and 4, and that matches in nicely with C. So let's look at an exam style question. The graph of a cubic function f of x is shown. Which of the graph below represent f dash of x, the first derivative of f of x? Explain your choice. OK, so this was a mock exam, but it gives you a sense of how those questions can be asked. Tricky here because actually they didn't give us any numbers to work with. Uh, graph A is a negative quadratic, B is a positive quadratic, C is a positive quadratic. Now, it would be too easy if they gave us a negative quadratic. So if we look up above, this is a positive cubic as expected. So we have to disregard our negative quadratic, which means we're going between B and C. So now we need to figure out which of these is the correct derivative for this given cubic? So I'm going to focus in on my turning points. And I have one negative and one positive. So I'll have two roots, a negative and a positive root, which we have here, which looks right. C has no real roots because it doesn't cross the x axis. So it can't be this one. So the correct answer is B. Okay, so let's do another exam style question. This one is a little bit trickier. So the graph of a cubic function is shown on the right. One of the graphs A, B, C and D shows the graph of the derivative of F. State which one it is and justify your answer. Okay, so this is a positive cubic and we've been given four different graphs. I have a positive quadratic, a negative quadratic, a positive quadratic, and a negative quadratic. So we can straight away disregard the negative quadratics because a positive cubic will always give us a positive quadratic. Now, we want to take its turning points and match them up. But unfortunately, this has no turning points. So there are no turning points. If you were to work with this, we would have what we call a saddle point, which will be about here, where it turns from concave up to concave down. Um, but there is no minimum or maximum turning points. So if there's no turning points, that means that the corresponding quadratic will have no roots. So the correct answer is C, because, um, well, best way to put this would be because the cubic has no turning points so therefore the corresponding or well the derivative the quadratic that corresponds um has no roots and that is c okay So now let's take a look at first and second derivatives. So each diagram below shows part of a graph of a function. 
each of these functions is either a quadratic, cubic, um, exponential, or trigonometric. So not necessarily in that order. Um, then we have a second set, and in each of the diagrams below, shows the graph of the first derivatives of one of the above functions. Again, not necessarily in the same order. And the third set of functions we have here show the graph of the, the second derivatives of the original functions, but again, not necessarily in the same order. So we need to fill in this table for the type of function. So the first thing we have, if I have a quadratic, which one is that? So that is function k, so it's our smiley face. Um, cubic, so you might say, oh, g kind of could be a cubic. Um, g is very specifically a, g, um, a trigonometric function, and a trigonometric function that goes through the midline, or the origin in this case, which means it's the sine function. So f is more the cubic function. It has three arms, which links to the idea of degree three, because cubic is x to the power of three. So trigonometric is G, and that gives us um, exponential as H. So we then need to think, well, what happens if you differentiate a quadratic? So if you have an X squared, which that is, so that's an X squared. Uh, let's say that's E to the power of X, an exponential. That is, I've just said, sine of X, and this is X to the power of 3. Well, what happens when you differentiate each of those? Well, when you take quadratic, which is x squared, and differentiate it, you'll get 2x. So you'll get a linear. So 2x. So that is b. When you have a cubic and you differentiate it, you get 3x squared. So it becomes a quadratic. So that is d. A trigonometric, when you differentiate sine, it becomes cos which is what we have here, so that's A, which means the exponential when we differentiate becomes this. And actually what has happened is that was actually e to the power of minus x because it was negative, let me clean that up. So that was actually e to the power of minus x, which meant when we differentiated that became e minus e to the power of minus x. So that was C and that's why it's turned it's effectively flipped over that x-axis. So then to do the second derivative, we go again. So the quadratic was x squared. So see if you can follow this, x squared became 2x and then becomes 2, which is a constant. And that constant would be there. So that is a constant. So that's my first, my second derivative. Um, if I then go for cubic, so x to the power of 3, 3x squared, the next one becomes 6x, which is linear. So there is my 6x. There's my green to follow through. There's my red to follow through. So 6x, so that gives me 2. And then trigonometric, I had a cos. I differentiate my cos. So see if we can follow that. Sine of x, cos of x. Differentiating cos of x actually gives you minus sine of x is which we have here. So that is 3, 2, 3. And that means by process of elimination, the second derivative of the exponential will have to be iv, which would make sense because we have minus e to the power of minus x, which is e to the power of minus x when we differentiate it. So for one row in your table, explain your choice. So we can literally do what we have been doing. Um, so we can start with our cubic, and if that is my f of x, let's say that simply equals x cubed. When we differentiate that, we get a quadratic. So that means f dash of x would have given you 3x squared. And when you differentiate that, we get a linear. So f double dash of x is equal to 6x. And you could do absolutely anything um, there on the graph. So you could use quadratic, which differentiates to linear, and a linear, which differentiates to a constant. So that is a horizontal or a vertical line, a constant. Um, you could explain the trigonometric function. You could explain the exponential. But I think the easiest to work with is the cubic. It's the one we're probably most familiar with.